السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جمعة مباركة يوا بسم الله الحمد لله الحمد لله حين أحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يعده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم All praise is due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leaves astray, nobody can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship, no God but Allah, the one who has no partner. I bear witness that uh, the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in the state of full submission to Allah. So last week, the nation, the country was uh, observing this uh, national holiday, you know, not to have its own controversy or whatnot, but there's longer discussions later, but this holiday around Thanksgiving, around giving thanks, around giving gratitude, um, whatever the origins, whatever the things of it may be, but the substance of it kind of being around this theme of gratitude and giving thanks. And as we enter a new month, as we enter uh, towards the end of closing the chapter of another year uh, and looking forward to uh, a new year to come, you know, may Allah enable us to see that we, and especially with respect to that which is happening around the world, um, that which we are seeing on the news and the headlines, particularly uh, with our brothers and sisters in Palestine and in Palestine and elsewhere in the world who are suffering uh, this aspect of thanksgiving, of giving thanks, of gratitude should not be lost upon us and how our gratitude should not just be an, uh, a responsive action. Our gratitude should not just be something that we think about in the worst of times. Our gratitude is something that is built into us as human beings, as, as Muslims. And from the origin of humanity, we see in the Quran where Allah uh, tells the, uh, the heavenly assembly of angels and, and the heavenly beings that I'm creating this, this, you know, vicegerent, this Khalifa, creating uh, Adam, creating this first human being. And in creating this human being, the, uh, the order is given to prostrate to this creation, to prostrate before this human and all prostrate except for Iblis, who protests and says that, no, I will not prostrate this before this uh, creation. I'll not prostrate the you created him or you created this human from dirt, from clay. You created me from smokeless fire. I am better. I am better than than him and I will not submit. And Allah reprimands the arrogance that is being that is being uh, demonstrated and says your arrogance has no place here. Uh, that that remove this, uh, remove yourself from the space, but your arrogance has no place here. And Shaitan, or at least in that sense, responds back um, with respect to this charge of arrogance that says, you know, that for, to this banishment that give me permission, give me, give me a chance to do my work out there and, and give me a chance to show it. And I won't not necessarily just show that they are also arrogant, that I'm not just the only arrogant one, they are arrogant, but I will show them to be, uh, that you'll find amongst them uh, that they are not grateful. And so this aspect of arrogance that got Shaitan kicked out is connected with the, uh, with, with the parallel of uh, of being ungrateful, of not having gratitude, that uh, with shaitan working the things that uh, shaitan works out at coming hum at humanity from front, back, side to side, from all different corners and directions, that uh, the purpose of this, the aim of this is not just to make them arrogant, is not just to make them uh, not humble, is to make them lack gratitude, is to make them be ungrateful. Because when you think about not having gratitude within Islam, not being grateful within Islam, uh, it, 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 it comes part and parcel with elements of arrogance, thinking ourselves to be self-sufficient. It comes at aspects of not being humble or not being uh, having that humility. Uh, we, 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 we don't think that there's somebody to thank. We think of ourselves in, in that sense. And so we see what, uh, what, what our uh, what our innate creation is, our innate part and parcel of our substance in which we are created, apart from the clay, is a uh, inherent disposition to gratitude, to be inclined to remember 
the favors of our Lord, to be uh, inclined to be grateful for our Lord, and the inherent uh, path that shaitan takes us on or tries to take us off of is one uh, that is, is is leads us in a way that makes us not grateful. And being not grateful is not just us acting actively uh, uh, on gratitude or not actively acting on gratitude, but even just passively, not even thinking about being grateful for some things. And in this particular moment, when we see the different headlines, when we see the images, when we see the things that uh, people are not even promised or people do not even uh, have, whether it's just working power, electricity, or a roof over their head, or uh, an idea that tomorrow might be their last day or today might be their last day. All these different uh, things that are taken for granted, we sometimes do, and we don't realize it uh, until we see these uncomfortable images and we're put in that position. But we see that Allah tells us in the Quran that indeed we have guided humanity by to the way. We've gotten humanity to the way, whether they be uh, grateful or shakir, or whether they be uh, ungrateful or karfur, that, that you have this aspect of shukr, uh, this aspect of gratitude that means to acknowledge and to show this appreciation for a blessing, but it's contrasted with uh, this aspect of uh, kufr, which we see as uh, the, uh, you know, the, you have the exact opposite, but kufr that we oftentimes associate with disbelief, that kufr being this uh, th this aspect uh, that's coming from this root word of kafara that means to cover something, makes it hidden. And, and, and kufr itself, meaning to refuse to appreciate the benefits or to not to willingly not acknowledge them. And we hide our appreciation or we uh, don't give those thanks and we don't show that gratitude. And so those who are not uh, giving uh, the, that thankfulness or those who are not grateful um, are then given this kind of this, this category, uh, this categorization of disbelief or of kufr, um, which shows the magnitude of being ungrateful to Allah. That it's not just in taking up idols for worship, but it's also in not giving the due respect or the due uh, kind of gratitude that's due. And so one of these signposts of, uh, of, of getting back to the path of Allah, one of these uh, signposts of getting uh, connecting with Allah and staying on that path is uh, to be gratitude, is to be grateful, is to acknowledge that. And we see that gratitude within Islam is not just a uh, you know, external aspect where it's like, I'm grateful for this object, I'm grateful for this object, I'm grateful for this. Islam reframes it that you are you should be grateful for so many things that don't even have to be external, that are just internal, that you think about what's the gratitude of me living with my eyes working right now versus me not being able to see. What is the uh, gratitude that I have to be able to even speak when I'm thinking about people who are not able to speak or be able to walk on my uh, feet or be able to do things with my hands or able to do different things? How am I grateful for those things? Allah tells us that gratitude also opens up doors for us to attain more in this life and the next. That in Surah Al-Imran, Allah says that if anyone does desire reward in this life, we'll give it to them. And if any does uh, desire a reward in the hereafter, we'll give it to them. And swiftly shall we reward those that serve us with gratitude. Um, and Allah continues uh, again in the Quran that it is Allah who has made the night and the day to follow each other for such as have the will to celebrate him, uh, his praises to show their gratitude. Um, and Allah tells us in, in Surah Doha that uh, did he not bring you, did he not find you lost and guided you? Did he not uh, you know, do all of these favors for you? Did he not see you uh, as an orphan and give you shelter? And at the end tells us uh, uh, to, to rise up and proclaim the blessings of your Lord. That, that, that rise up and proclaim the blessings of your Lord. And when you look at this aspect, and we'll close on this, of gratitude being something that uh, is is encouraged. It is something that is uh, pushed as well within the realm of wellness, of mental health and mental well-being, of these gratitude journals, of things to be more mindful of. Because when we realize the power of gratitude, that we sit and we're just grateful for what are we grateful for, and we look at those who may not have the things that we do that we don't that, that we do, um, we, we we start to gain a sense of appreciation, but also the aspect of practicing gratitude has a powerful impact on our own mental health and wellness, and subsequently on our spiritual health, our physical health, relational health, so on and so forth. And so our Prophet Sallallahu taught us, when you are in a situation or when you when you look to something, wishing you had something, don't look to the person in front of you. Don't look to the person who is above you in terms of having different possessions and stuff. Look to the person to your the, to, who's behind you. Look at the person who's, who's, who, whose uh, society deems is underneath and see what they don't have. 
and be appreciative of what we do have. And we start to count those blessings as Allah tells us, and we'll never be able to count them. So thinking about what does practicing gratitude have for us, not just after Thanksgiving and after food and whatnot, what does practicing gratitude have for us at this particular moment in the world? And so many different things are going on when we see uh, the, uh, the, the uh, hazard in which our brothers and sisters in Gaza and Palestine and, uh, are, are living with the oppression that's there. And what are some of those things we take for granted, whether it's a shelter over our head, whether it's the fact that hopefully we can wake up tomorrow and not have to worry about being bombed. What if it's just being able to get into a car and drive to somewhere? What if it's being able to just stand up on two feet? What if it's just being able to have clothes? Uh, what if it's just being able to have our eyesights, the taste uh, that we have, the hearing that we have, all these different things that we see in our society start to be lost with old age or start to being uh, that we, we we take for granted. So when we when we do not practice that gratitude, we go into that realm of being coming more and more distant from Allah uh, and easier to be picked at by shaitan. Um, when we stay on that aspect and continue to remind ourselves of Allah's favors and be grateful to Allah, we stay connected to Allah and gain not only more in this world, but in the hereafter. So inshallah, may Allah allow us to be a people that practice that gratitude to always be grateful, to remain grateful to Allah, and that no matter what we do, uh, the mistakes that we make, the uh, brokenness that we have as part of our humanity, that we uh, are continuing to be those who, in practicing our gratitude, stay on the path of the Sirat al mustaqim and always stay connected to our Lord and Creator, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, may Allah make it easy for us to be mindful and to be open in, in our eyes and our senses of seeing what we really do have to be grateful for, uh, even if it is just the daily breath that we take for granted that others may not have. So may Allah enable us to see these things more, inshallah, uh, in the future we'll go in more in depth with this. But I hope you have a blessed Jummah to you all. Jummah Mubarak again. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa akhru wa da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum.